everybody, it's Kara, and if you're like me, you have been seeing a lot of wine cork charm videos on YouTube. And I resisted them as long as I could, and then I caught a couple different videos from some people on YouTube, and one of them had a tutorial that was helpful, and I just couldn't resist, so I ordered some corks. Mine are all like this with the a bunch of grapes on them. I just looked up um, wine, I think it was wine making supplies, something like that, or wine corks um, on Google and found a ton of different suppliers. You can also find them on eBay and probably on Etsy. Uh, I just went the you know quickest route. I got I think 30 of them for, I think it was four or five dollars. So I figured that was pretty decent. And then the tutorial that I watched, which I'm going to try and remember to link down below, was from, I believe, the Scrappy Bookworm 1, who I think is Cynthia. I hope that's your name. I hope I got that right because I watched so many videos. If not, I apologize. But um, she kind of went over the supplies that you need, and um, which I had everything except for the actual cork and then showed off some of her creations and I just decided I had to give it a try. So I thought I would very quickly go over the supplies that I used, show you the ones I made, and then show you how to make some. So I think this is going to be one video, but it might end up being two, just depending on how long we go. So basically what you're going to need is obviously some wine corks. This particular wine cork is about, it's about one and three quarter inches long and about three quarter inches, or a little bit more, probably just under an inch, about an eighth under an inch. And you can get them in different sizes, at least where I was shopping you could. I just kind of went for the one that was about medium size. And then I used the little Tim Holtz pins, I don't remember their official name, but I used those. And that again was one of the things that was suggested in that tutorial video I told you about. And then you just need some variety of chain, some jump rings or split rings depending on how you want to latch different things to your charm and some head pins if you are not going to use this particular kind. You could also make this little loop which you're going to see why I used it here in a minute but you could also make this out of a thicker wire um, if you wanted to if you were crafty. I happen to have these and I haven't really been using them for much so I thought this would be something good to to use them for. So let me show you the ones I made. I have four different ones completed Here's the first one. So I have a little kind of doily at the top. You can see there's that Tim Holtz ring. A little bit of bling, a pink pearl. This one, if you can see, it actually has a little bit of gesso just kind of randomly rubbed on the cork. And then I tied, I wrapped and tied some pink seam binding on there. The bottom has another little doily, another pin with some other beads on there. And then these little charms, like so. This, I think, is an arty cake, and I honestly, at the moment, don't remember where I got that one. But anyway, maybe it was on one of my other haul videos. There's the first one. And then I have this one. Again, you have the pins at the top, some rhinestone beads. This is some trim, two different kinds of trim. The black lace that's kind of pleated was first, and then I... Um, glued the rhinestone on top and I basically used a mixture depending on which part we're talking about of um, I think it's E6000 and glossy accents yeah E6000 and glossy accents that's what I used and then on the bottom I have another one of the pins with some beads and this time I did three little things dangling this little bead chain or dangle whatever you want to call it is actually something I was creating for something else and I never got around to using it and I thought it went really well. So you can see they're just basically the bead dangles that I've talked about making when I do my charm bracelets and such latched together. And then another little one here and then a key. I believe you can see that. So that's the second one. And then I have one that's a little bit more simple. I was trying to again use what I had. Some dark dark blue beads at the top and the bottom. Again, using those pins, and then I did a little bit of a French theme with another one, and that fleur de lis charm, the bottom, and an Eiffel Tower. So there's those. Let me pull my camera back just a little bit too. Oops, wrong way. Sorry about that, guys. 
So there's the three of those. Then I have one more made, and it's another pink one. And this is the only one I have done in kind of that gold. So again, I put the trim around the edges, and this time to hide the seam where the trim met, because on the black one, it looks really good, but this one you could kind of see a noticeable like seam. I um, took a couple of I Am Roses, little rosebuds, put some seam binding around it, tied a little bow, and then glued it right where that seam's at, and then have a couple little charms at the bottom. So there's that. So I had a ton of fun making these, and they're at least for me, very, very addictive. So I'm just going to forewarn you, I have these four made. I have two more in the stages of being made for the purpose of this video. So in a relatively short period of time, I will have made like six of these things because they're just that much fun. So what I usually do is I start out making the main piece, which is this. I do the dangles later. So I get the two pins on with the beads that I like and I do adhere the pin a little bit although it would probably stay in here on its own. So on this one I'm going to do another pink one and I have all my pieces kind of picked out so you can see. Basically I'm going to take this pin and those two beads. There's going to be the top part and I like to have at least that much left which is about a little over half an inch left, okay? And I just kind of eyeball the center, and usually before I do it, I make my hole. So I just kind of eyeball it. Let's see, I'm working around my tripod, so I'm not going to be the most graceful, but right about there, hopefully. And I make the hole first with the pin. You know, get it kind of ready. I'll pull it back out, put the beads on, and then I'm going to take, in this case, the E6000, and I just basically take the top off. This is not like my favorite adhesive to work with because it's kind of so stringy, but in this case it works really well, and I just make sure there's a little bit near the top, like so. Stick the pin in there. Wipe off the extra if I need to. Cap it again so it doesn't get all over the place. And again, I might wipe off just a teeny bit of this. I have a little rag over to the side so it doesn't smear too much. Find that hole where I made it. And stick it right in there with the glue. Obviously, some of the glue will come up as you're pushing the pin in. Make sure it's where you want it. And you might need to wipe just a teeny bit off if you get a little bit too much coming back up. Kind of depends on if you're going to do anything else. There's the first one, okay? So that's going to be my top. And obviously if I had wanted to do something like a little doily or something, I would have done that already, would have included that. And then here is going to be my bottom. Again, let me make the hole. And you could of course make them in advance so you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. I normally do both of them at the same time, but I kind of sort of forgot. And it's ultimately no big deal. I'll put my beads back on here. Hopefully I will anyway. There we go. Again, I'll get that E6000. I also have used Glossy Accent. Just kind of personal preference on what you're doing. I really just want to make sure that these pins stay in there, so I've been doing that part of it with the E6000. I'm going to find that hole again, stick it right in there, make sure it's secure, and then my personal preference is I like the pins to line up, if that makes sense. And obviously you don't, you could do, you know, just a pin on the bottom, you don't always have to have beads, it's your call. Um, I just, I like the symmetry of that. So there's that, and this actually might be my top, I think. So there's that one. Now if I'm going to put any gesso or anything else trim-wise on that cork, I'm going to do it now and basically get the body of the charm ready. So, for example, on this one, I would gesso it and I had to let that dry a little bit and then I did the seam binding and I did all of these with the trim. Um, 
sorry, this one, and then this one, and of course this one, so that they would all have time to dry as well as this, which, you know, obviously doesn't take too terribly long. So I would sit this aside now, and I would just kind of give it a little bit of time to dry. And I have one that I did already. This one is in a, like kind of purples and blacks, and it's got gold um, pins and uh, bead caps and that kind of stuff. So it's ready to go. And the rest, the rest of this is as easy as when you do a charm bracelet. I mean, basically, you're just going to decide what you want dangling from the bottom. I have a key, and then I have two dangles in the dark purple with a little bit of black on them. Now, if you wanted to put a whole bunch of other charms on the bottom or a whole bunch more beads, you can. It just kind of depends on how fancy you make it. And you could use uh, head pins on this. I happen to have... Um, chain that I can open up pretty easily. So let me get that going real quick. And I just use the same tools that I do when I'm making a charm bracelet. Same, you know, opening it up and trying to not bend it too much out of shape. Put it on your bottom pin. And I would be doing a regular um, jump ring or split ring the same way. So there's one dangle, and then I'll take the next one. And this is usually when um, the main piece, the main cork part is drying, I get my bead dangles and everything ready and you know picked out so that when it's dry I can just get going on it. There's that one. Again, trying to not bend it too much out of shape. There's that one, and then let's see. I actually think I'm going to take a little bit of chain off of this one and make it dangle a little higher. Let me do that over here. And put that on the other side of the key, like so. Get this closed up, just like that. And then basically you have your charm completed. Now obviously this is a little more simple. I just thought that these big purple beads, and actually I think I'm going to shorten that one up a little bit more even. I just thought these big purple beads were gorgeous and they didn't need a lot of other stuff with them. So that's why I went ahead and kept this one relatively simple. I may find um, a bit of black um, tool or seam binding and tie it around the middle there just to give it a little bit more of a pop. But other than that, I think it's pretty much done. I'll let that other one there dry for just a little bit, that pink one that we made together in the beginning. And then I'll finish that one up. That one's going to be with silver chain, and I have some dangles all ready to go for that. So I will have pretty easily created six of these cork charms. Obviously, you don't need to create six all at one time. I was a little bit nutso with this, but I had a ton of fun making them. And they're so simple and easy. It's, this would even be a great starting place if you wanted to get into making charm bracelets and things like that because they don't require, these do not require as much work as a charm bracelet. You're not having to bend as much um, or put as much on the chain, all of that good stuff. So you can see there's a variety of things you can do with these. And they're just very, very addictive. You can use all your little bits and pieces. This is some of these pieces here, like this one and this one on the black, was literally from my little bucket of stuff that you know I had on another project and didn't use, kind of thing. So, hopefully, that gives you some good ideas. And if you have any questions, you can leave them down below. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you're having a great day wherever you're at. Bye.